Hello, uh, just another video, uh, this time it's on attaching cloth, I mean end cloth to a skin character so that it behaves correctly. So we have here this character and I, I made a dress for her and I want to to have the dress move accordingly to her motion. So this upper part is going to be really stick to the body no more no not much cloth behavior but down here at this part this needs to uh, to be loose just like cloth so to get this uh, I'm gonna do a create that cloth system and use a special constraint that gives us better result than uh, the input mesh thing so this tutorial is maybe, uh, I'm not going to go to over all the things, uh, so don't expect this to be a step-by-step -step how to with explanation of everything. It's just a quick uh, uh, show of my method. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is uh, skin this thing to our, um, to our bone system, to the, to the skin setup. So to do that, I'm just going to select all my bound joints with the select by name field. Shift select the this mesh and go to skin, bind, skin, smooth, bind. Let's see the options. Okay, this is good. I select the joints you would need to do so that we don't select any unnecessary joints down the hierarchy. Bind skin. There it goes. Our mesh is now bound, but it looks ugly. So the next step is to copy the skin weights from our skinned model to this thing, so that we don't have to paint the skin weights, just just, just copies it. I'm going to look for this in my outliner, here it is. And this is my, my input base mesh with all the skin clusters and blend shapes. So I copy, I select this, shift select, my uh, dress mesh in the outliner and copy skin weights over closest point on surface influence associations I use uh, one to one for all gives me good results hit copy and now you see everything follows like it should so the next step is to duplicate this cloth and I'm going to hide the first one. And with this new duplicate, this is uh, an empty cloth. No motion on this. I'm going to make this to an end cloth. So let's go to end dynamics, end mesh, create end cloth. Let's go to the options. I don't have any solvers here yet. So let's use a new one. Local space output. Uh, also reset just the uh, default settings, create cloth. Our shaders disappear, but that's no problem, we can reassign them later. Um, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, it starts falling down and yeah, it's just going to fall down infinitely, there's no collision on anything. So what it did is, uh, let me go to this, and switch this from mesh type from smooth to anim proxy. So what this is this is a the same version of the skinned mesh but just reduced uh, by a very big amount so when you see my this mesh has about 36,000 polygons and my this collider mesh has just uh, less than 3,000 so this is very good for simulating so that Maya doesn't have to calculate too much unnecessary vertices. So we're going to use this as a collider. Let's get here with, with this uh, selected. Go to the... Ah, by the way, uh, what, how I did this is I just selected this, my duplicate my initial model, and uh, ran a, a under mesh. Uh, in the polygons menu, the reduce. 
This is gonna leave you. A, this is gonna not be very clean, so you need to rework after that to fix up every all of the triangles that may be left over. However, this is how I reduce the mesh. So now let's shift select the or control select the nucleus in the outliner. Go to unconstrained. And no, uh, sorry. It's just uh, unmesh create passive collider. And select our nucleus in the option and select make collide. So now this mesh should collide with our and it already looks like it. Let's uh, see how this looks. Moving this around. So yeah, we should need to increase uh, the gravity. This is way too slow. So let's get to the nucleus options. And here under gravity, I'm gonna increase this by 10. So let's put in 98. And let's see how this looks. I think this is now gonna look some sort of strange. Yeah, you see the cloth is getting way too heavy and it's dragging down. So this is uh, what we're gonna fix next. Remember we created, we skinned our thing first. Here's so a one with a skin cluster. We wanna select this, shift select this, and then go to unconstrained and choose attack, attract to matching mesh. So I uh, use just the default settings. Let's create that constraint. And let's see what is what this animation looks by now. So you see nothing happens because this class shape now is completely attracted to this thing via this constraint. So if we're doing this in the interactive playback, you see, this is the way our skinned mesh would behave. We don't need to view this uh, constraint any longer. I'm going to hide this. So we're going to do now, select this cloth, go to the unconstrained options tab and paint properties by vertex map. And we are going to choose the strength so you see, everything is set to white. That means everything's gonna react with a strength of one to that constraint. What we wanna do now is replace with zero and paint the slower part where the dress should behave more dynamically and loose. Paint it with black. Okay. Let's uh, smooth flood this just a little. What we could also do is paint some other parts, not completely black, just like uh, with a value of 0.5, like here on the lower side of the arms. Maybe just a little bit here on this upper side and smooth it a little. Okay, now let's check the animation now. I'm gonna hide the joints, don't need to view those. So you see, now this lower side behaves dynamically. I, I should need, before tweaking this any further, Go into the unclass shape options uh, here and apply a let's apply a preset t shirt and silk blend this with 50%. So this is going to behave like a good option. Let's try this now. Uh, freaking auto save. Okay, now.
the playback is very slow. You could also uh, would be the better way to test this out is to key your animation in a, uh, for a certain frame range and then cache it so you can uh, scrub through the timeline. Let's uh, let's do this really quickly. I'm gonna uh, adjust my timeline here to just about um, 48. Don't need very much. And then let's grab this control over here. Key, um, translate and rotate. Go to frame, um, let's use frame 8, frame 20. I move this just a little to the side. On frame 30, I have auto key turned on. I don't need to set any extra keys. A little bit to the other side, okay. Now let's uh, run this animation. I uh, want to add another one. Let's get this foot. And do. When it's here, I want to have her foot be like this so that we see how this behaves on this point. And then for 3 and 30, let's get this back to zero. Now let's grab this cloth. Go to end solver. And now here to end cache. And create a new cache. Let's check the options. Uh, we want to do the time slider. Or let's just reset. Just use the default settings. Let's hit create. I um, already had an X. Um, just uh, going to replace. So now it's going to uh, run this thing once and uh, save the vertex positions of this mesh. To a to an external file, so that the next time we play it, it's going to read those from the file, and we don't no longer need to have this thing being calculated every day, every uh, single time. So you see, now I have much faster playback. This wasn't very too um, of a good example. The motion is not very good. Very very slow let's uh, just get to the interactive playback and check how this thing looks when it uh, collides with itself so you see uh, it's because of the cache it's still it's reading from the cache I'm gonna delete the cache so just uh, for you to get the uh, little point with the cache, it's really useful. Delete. Okay, now I'll rewind the animation and play this back again. And let's move this towards the body. And so you see this starting to look very, very strange down here and here. Let's get to the cloth. Under collisions, turn off self collide. We don't need that. Turn down the collision thickness to maybe uh, 0.2. Depends on your scene size. For me, 0.2 is a good value. Let's try this again. Get her arm right next to the body. And you see the behavior is much better because the end cloth now is not calculating the self collisions and it also runs uh, slightly faster we still have some issues here and the arm gets uh, to the body this is a thing we need to check in the end rigid or let's see what was the my dynamic collider mesh it's the unrigid shape 2. It's this one. We can reduce the collide thickness to 0.2 here too. Reduce the collide strength maybe to 
or no 0.75 maybe and decrease the friction even further let's see how this looks so you see now it's looking better so yeah this is all about this um, it's now as I mentioned, I'm, so I was not about to explain every attribute here in all of the cloth system things. I encourage you maybe to get a digital tutors account and view their, their tutorials. They're very good. Explain every single attribute here and what it does. Um, so however, this was just a quick show up on how to get your mesh, get your end cloth uh, stick to the mesh, to a skinned model. So. Um, see you in the next video someday. Bye-bye.